Hey everyone, welcome to part one of a possible two to three part series where I go over some helpful tips that new players need to know for Vindictus. This first video is going to cover some more of the technical aspects and some very early game tips to get you started. But without further ado, let's jump in. Vindictus isn't the best optimized when rendering certain graphics, and you may run into low FPS issues. Instead of using the graphics slider, go into Advanced and play around with the graphics settings. One of the biggest FPS killers in the game is the Shader Detail, the Dynamic Shadow Detail, and Particle Effects. If you're having FPS issues, try lowering down these three and it should smooth out your FPS. Optional tip, but if you're having a lot of stuttering or lag in town, it may be due to the game trying to load everyone's armor and effects. The game has 200 channels, and if you're lagging too much in town, try finding a less populated or vacant channel. Vindictus functions on a peer-to-peer -peer system when partying with other players. Party leaders function as hosts, and their members connect to them. The quality of your connection is represented by bars in party lobbies. Four to five bars mean smooth sailing. Three bars is playable, but there might be slight hiccups here and there. Two bars will likely incur input delays, so you'll have to react earlier than you normally would, but it's still playable. One bar, however, is a bad time. Things that can cause connection issues are 1. The host may have crappy internet, which will cause the entire party to lag. 2. The host may have excellent internet, but there's a large distance between you and the host, creating latency issues. Or 3. Despite the host having good internet, your internet might be bad, which is oftentimes represented by everyone having four to five bars except for you. Whatever the cause, you're going to join a laggy party now and again. Know that it's not usually the game, but rather the host, you, distance, or a combination of the three. Also, if you have bad internet, you are going to get complaints from your party members about lag when you host. Since 2017, the devs nerfed the first 85 levels worth of content to be easy and soloable for newer players. While I personally didn't like this change, it was necessary as newer players would often get stuck on early raid bosses that they couldn't solo. With that in mind, know that you're going to be alone for the first 85 levels of content. However, it shouldn't take you long. Completing the first 85 levels of content should only take about 3-4 to four days of casual play or 1-2 to two days of hardcore grinding. The game is divided into seasons. Season 1, designated by red quest icons, will take your character from 1 to level 70. Bosses here are nothing more than over-glorified punching bags, so use this to learn your character's moves and rotations. Season 2, designated by green quest icons, will begin right after Season 1 ends and will take your character to around level 85. Bosses here will be a little bit tougher and require some effort, but if you're adept at hack and slash games, you should be fine. Season 3, we'll touch on later in another video. Due to certain in-game mechanics, items from certain level ranges still hold quite a bit of value for higher level players. While leveling, sell off any gear, weapons, or accessories that are level 30 to 44. Price these items for around 15,000 less than the going rate of Element Stone Catalysts. This can also be done again with level 70 to 80 items, but instead are to be sold for around 25,000 less than the going rate of Spirit Magic Powder. You won't make a ton of gold, but it'll net you a couple mil in your pocket, which can help. While leveling, you'll pick up a lot of garbage items, but if there's any items you want to keep, it's the following. Magic powders and blessed magic powders, as these are used to make elixirs for enchanting. Any and all erg crystals, as these have various uses, from potion making, to crafting, to skill awakenings. Ores, leathers, cloths, and other crafting materials, just in case you want to pick up crafting in the late game, or you can sell them off for profit. It's worth adding this little teacup icon to your screen. Clicking it will show what channels currently have a hot spring buff going. Once you arrive at the channel, make sure there's a player name under the hot spring. 
Sometimes, the hot spring status window doesn't update and you'll end up looking for soap buffs that have already expired. If it's correct and you see a name, however, have a seat in the springs, and after about 30 seconds or so, you'll get a nice little buff that will make leveling even easier, as you'll be way stronger with the buff. Alongside the early content nerfs, Story Progression Mode was added, and it allows you to expedite the leveling process. It unlocks around level 4 when you receive the quest, Gwen's Request. Clicking the red Story Progression Mode button will enter you into the dungeon, and after you complete it, it will let you remotely talk to the required NPCs, and will instantly throw you into the next dungeon. This doesn't go on forever, as certain quests will require you to manually return to town and visit NPCs. But if you are thrown back to town, make sure that the NPC can't be remotely accessed via the quest log. Around level 50, you'll be given a choice by Nile at the Magic Laboratory for what path to choose on your transformation. For the most part, it's all about aesthetics. But there are two key differences between Dark Knights and Paladins. Dark Knights can sap enemy HP and add it to their attack, while Paladins can send out orbs that deal damage and petrify normal monsters. Dark Knights can also temporarily solidify a boss, halting its movements, while Paladins can generate a shield that absorbs X amount of damage and prevents staggering while active. Make the choice based on what you think you want more, and which one looks cooler. That does it for this list of 10 tips for newer players. Keep an eye out for part 2 where I give 10 more tips on what newer players should do as they approach and begin endgame content. <laughs>